there we go. We can hear and see you. It is all yours. And again, anybody, if you have any questions, just type them in the Q&A and Elizabeth will get to that at the end of her presentation. All yours, Elizabeth. Thank you. I wanted to mention, Brett, great job with that because I know when I talk to high schoolers and even undergrad students that are in the process of choosing a career, sometimes what they forget to do is see what careers are actually available right now. So that's such an important thing that Brett talked about, but I just want to take a second to touch on. Look at how many jobs are available for the field you want to study in. Make sure it's a viable career before you decide to jump in with it, especially something like aviation. Aviation is very technical. It's uh, a lot of fun. I love aviation. I'll tell you a little bit about myself and the program that I'm, I'm heading. Uh, but it's really great to have a, a good understanding of the industry you're trying to get into. And uh, you can just jump in with your eyes closed and hope for the best, but it's a little bit better if you know what the expectations for the career are and what job uh, opportunities are out there for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right, so you guys should be able to see that. So I work at California Baptist University and we're located in Southern California. We are not in LA, but we're about 40 miles inland of Los Angeles, close to the Ontario airport that you might be familiar to that. My name is Elizabeth Murillo, and I teach in all aspects of our aviation science program. So I do work with the students in general that are entering that maybe aren't sure what they want to do within aviation. And I work with the students um, that are specifically trying to pursue dispatch career. And so you might know a little bit about dispatch, but because I have students enroll in it and every single student that enrolls in it ultimately asks me, what am I doing here again? because they know it's a good career. I talk it up, they know it's a great opportunity. Um, they know it's good for them, but they don't really understand what is dispatch. So I wanted to just really explain that a little bit better for you today. So you can really consider this as a viable career opportunity. So first of all, um, I am the dispatch program lead. So I have my dispatch certificate and I teach the courses that are specifically um, geared towards the dispatch program. Uh, you have to have a dispatch certificate in order to do that, so I qualify for that. But my background is actually aviation flight. So I have my ATP, which is my airline transport pilot certificate, and my CFII, so I've been a flight instructor for many years, and I have my aircraft dispatcher um, certificate. So all three are FA certificates. I need all three to be able to do my job, but you don't have to have flight certificates in order to be a dispatcher. It just helps me to, to do my job as a professor. So I've been in the industry for 17 years. I started off as a pilot. I moved to a flight instructor position. I decided I love that. I love teaching. And then um, I moved into the classroom and decided to teach. And so from teaching, I get to teach in our flight program that's specific to our flight, our management program uh, for aviation and our dispatch program. So I can help answer some of those questions if you have some general uh, broad questions in those, that area. I have seven years as a faculty member, so full-time uh, professor at California Baptist University. And I have eight years as a CFI where I was just, just flight instructing, nothing else, no side job flying. And then I have a few years on flying for small charter organizations, uh, companies. And then, so I wanted to mention some of my coworkers because our program is small. And so that's what I wanted to kind of highlight for a second. Uh, we do have a small program. So if you're looking for a large program, our program is not for you. If you're looking for a small program where you can get to know all the faculty and just have an idea of pretty much everybody in your class and you're gonna see these students over and over and over, which is good and bad because if you don't like me, you're still stuck with me. So that might be a downside, but um, Dr. John Marcellus, he's one of our instructors. He's our program uh, chair. So he leads our aviation program. He's a retired Air Force fighter pilot. Uh, and he's a colonel, retired as a colonel, served for 25 years and he has 11 years in higher ed. So he brings a really great depth of knowledge in aviation in general to the program. We have Dr. Creighton Goodman, who's currently deployed. So he is an Air Force pilot now. He flies KC-135s and he's a reservist and he's a Lieutenant Colonel and he's been in the service for 18 years. And he's been in uh, as a faculty member for seven years as well. So definitely a pilot with great experience. One comes with fighter pilot knowledge, one comes with cargo pilot and training. Uh, Dr. Goodman has extensive training experience 
as far as how do we instruct students better. And then we have Dr. Daniel Prather, who's been working in our program, um, who started our program here at CBU, and he's been aviation general teaching for about 15 years. And he really focuses on our management courses. So you would get to know all four of us, and it would be, like I said, a small program. You know our faculty, uh, you know who we are, what we do, and uh, we would know you as well. So that's kind of a little bit about our program. Our aviation program has only been around for seven years. Um, so we are somewhat of a newer program, but we are not new. We do have new airplanes, which is nice, but we are not a, a brand new program anymore. All right, so I wanted to specifically focus on dispatch. And I really love dispatch. And the part of the reason I wanted to focus on that is because I think so many people don't understand how awesome of an uh, opportunity dispatch is. You hear of pilot, everyone thinks aviation, they think pilot, or maybe they think uh, maintainer, which is a great career as well. And they definitely need AMPs and aircraft maintainers. Now the industry needs that a lot. Uh, so great career field as well. Or people think of air traffic control. And so they try to figure out which am I talking about? So dispatch is none of those things. Dispatch, you can kind of think of in the simplest terms, I wrote on our slide here, co-pilot on the ground. And the reason I put that is because as a licensed dispatcher, and I'll talk about the process to get your license, as a licensed dispatcher, you are working directly with the pilot. So when it comes down to it, you are provided with all the flight data information, you do all the research, you figure out all the weather, you plan for the routing, you calculate the data for the pilot, and then you hand them that data and you say, here is your flight plan. Here is what you're attempting today. And the pilot then gets the packet that you've created for them where you've posted all the weather and you've told them about potentially hazardous issues. You've told them about the aircraft condition, if there's any maintenance that, that is potentially gonna be needed to be done soon. And they look at the packet and they say, oh, okay, and you know, they, they probably won't have a question for you, but they can review that packet. And now they know, you know, because they have a long day ahead of them too, that there's somebody on the ground, almost like an assistant. Now I say almost like an assistant because I have a servant heart. I like to serve others and I love that in my career. And I, I make a great co-pilot. I make a good co-pilot, but I make a great co-pilot because I don't mind helping others. You have to have that personality because in dispatch, you are helping the pilots to be safe. You are helping them to get on the ground safely. You are helping them get in the air safely. So you are like their guardian angel in a sense. You are protecting their knowledge that they're receiving, making sure they have current up-to-date information. If an airport navigation aid closes, you are contacting them. If bad weather is reported on their route, you are contacting them. So it's a really important job. You're in constant communication with the pilot or you have to have the ability to be in constant communication with the pilot, more of it like a text messaging service, not, you know, you're not on the phone with them constantly while they're flying. But um, I do have shared authority as a big point because I do wanna make sure you understand you're not a secretary. You are um, a dispatcher with equal authority before the aircraft takes off. So before that aircraft takes off, if you looked at the weather or the aircraft maintenance or the schedule or whatever it is, and you said, hey, this doesn't look safe. This is not gonna work today. This cannot be done to maintain our airline safety standards. Then you have every right to cancel that flight. And the pilot does not have that um, authority to stop you at that point. So you do have a lot of authority. You have shared authority. We say 50-50 joint responsibility, meaning that in order for that aircraft to take off the ground, it needs your signature as a dispatcher, and it needs the pilot signature as a dispatcher. It cannot do it with one or it cannot do it without both signatures. So definitely a lot of responsibility. You're not just there to order them lunch or get them, you know, coffee before the flight. You're there making sure is this flight going to be safe? Are the passengers going to be protected? And so dispatch isn't going anywhere. It's been around for a while and it really is one of those crucial careers that again, it's kind of like a, the best kept secret. No one really knows about it, but it's an awesome career. Um, the second thing I have here, remote safety link for pilot and passengers. So I want you to imagine this because I, I really want you to walk away having an idea what this career is because that's the question I always get, what is dispatch really? And I don't wanna go around time, so I'll look at that. Okay, so I want you to imagine that you're the pilot. You've worked years to be the pilot. Being a pilot is not an easy thing. And 
you've advanced and you are now flying that airplane, right? And you are the captain, you have a co-pilot, you have a crew in the back, those flight attendants are doing their job and everything's fine. So what happens if bad weather wasn't predicted? Well, now you have the opportunity to call down to your dispatcher and say, hey, uh, what's that coming up ahead? Or am I gonna intercept that weather? Is that lightning right ahead of us? Is whatever coming our way? And the dispatcher has that up-to-date information and they can say, you know what? It's not that bad. You can get through it. You're gonna deviate. Let me recalculate your fuel for you. Your fuel is looking good, but now you have this much less extra fuel. Let me recommend this routing because, and see, this is the part because people say, well, the pilot can do all that. And that's true. The pilot can do all that. I'm a pilot. I know what we can do. But what the pilot does not have access to is the pilot cannot look at the screen that air traffic control sees. And the pilot doesn't see where all the other airplanes are headed. And so they might see there's other airplanes in the sky, but they don't know what the game plan is for ATC. And so now that dispatcher is that critical link <clears throat> where they're able to say, but the airspace over here is going to close because there's too many people going that way. So you're better to go this way. Or if somebody got sick on the airplane, they would contact the dispatcher and say, hey, somebody's sick. And then they're going to work with the dispatcher to be connected to a medical person. And that medical doctor is then going to advise the captain, you need to divert now or you need to go ahead and continue to your destination. Or if there's a maintenance warning that comes up, the pilot contacts the dispatcher. The dispatcher is like that old school phone operator, if you remember those old movies, where they connect the pilot over to the maintainer. And there's a maintenance department ready to talk to that pilot. So now the dispatcher is listening to the pilot and the maintainer and listening on their conversation and understanding what the problem is. And let's say something wasn't working, the dispatcher is recalculating the fuel situation under those new maintenance constraints. Or if they have to go to a different runway, the, the dispatcher is recalculating landing distance. So a very crucial role in safety, very um, exciting role because you always are gonna have a brand new day coming. I'll talk more about that in a second. And then the last point I have on here about the dispatch career to kind of give you an idea of what dispatch is, is uh, I put airline guardian. And the reason I put that is because airlines uh, run on a very small profit margin. People think that they just have billions and billions of extra dollars everywhere, and it's not that expensive to run an airline. But when things like COVID and, and um, the uh, 2008 market crashed, all that stuff really, or gas prices go up, oil prices go up, really affects uh, the airline industry and their ability to turn a profit and to just get by flight by flight because of how expensive the industry is. So the dispatchers are able to look at it and say, hey, you know what, it's not just our job to make sure the pilot has the most up-to-date information and the pilot is equipped with everything they need to make a safe decision. It's also our job to make sure we make good decisions for the airline in general. So if they're seeing two flights that maybe only have a third of the airplane full or one only has a quarter of the airplane full and the other has a third of the aircraft full, they can choose to put those two flights together. And now they're gonna save the airline one of those flights that they would have had to pay for. They can choose to um, navigate this route so they can save X amount of dollars on fuel. Uh, and fuel's a big one. I, I know we had a FedEx speaker and I've been to the FedEx headquarters and they talked about how, how much money they saved because like dispatchers were saving like two or three dollars each flight and it all adds up when you're doing so many flights. So they were saying we've saved this much money on fuel because our dispatchers figured out how to make our fuel stretch a little bit um, longer, how to plan a little bit better and that's manipulating the weight on the aircraft and everything else that's involved with performance for aircraft. So they're really looking at it. How do we keep operations profitable? How can we do our small part to keep the airline healthy economically? And then you look at the regulatory perspective. There are a lot of rules when it comes to the FAA. And so when it comes to the FAA, they give us a giant book. And if you've seen it, it's about, you can see on my face, about that thick. And it's rule after rule after rule after rule. Well, the dispatcher is that other person that knows all the rules. So yes, the pilot knows. And now the dispatcher's there to make sure they're going to follow it in a sense that they're their backup. Because pilots get overwhelmed and they're in the moment and they're working hard. 
the dispatcher then can also come in and be like, okay, but we got to make this work. We have to land with at least at least this much fuel on board. We can't make that diversion safely. We have to have at least this much of whatever they need. We can't let the airplane go because it's under maintenance right now, technically. It hasn't been signed off yet. Whatever the rules are that they're working together to follow, that dispatcher's that second person helping keeping that airline out of those hefty fines from the FAA. So I hope that kind of, uh, I have a few more slides, but I hope that kind of helps you understand, okay, what is the job doing? If you can see on my slide, the picture, I wanted to point out a couple other things. On the picture over here, you can see that this is the news. And so this is actually Southwest Airlines and this is the news. So you might be like, well, why is the news up? Well, a horrible thing to remember, but 9-11 happened and the news stations knew about it before the airlines. So after that, they have always had the news up in their dispatch center because they said, never again will we not know what's going on with our airlines. Never again will we take the chance that um, the public knows before we do and is able to help us get our aircraft on the ground. So they have the news up. And then you can see that they have the weather channel. You can't, that doesn't look like weather right there, but they have the weather channel up, you can see on the bottom there. And then you can see they have weather data up on the screen right there. So they're getting weather screen and it looks like they're actually having um, delays. And so they can get information from ATC as far as, uh, yes, you're trying to take off from LAX, but no, you can't take off right now because there's a 15 minute delay because there's a light rain on the field. So it'll, it'll tell you, hey, these are all the issues that we're kind of encountering. ATC might have a ground delay program. ATC might be um, having an issue with the airport being backed up. There might be uh, airspace congestion because the Super Bowl is in effect, whatever it is. So we have different screens that give us those information. On the bottom here, we can see the airport. You can zoom in and you can see where all your airplanes are. You can kind of figure out how long are they gonna be waiting on the ground? Did I calculate enough fuel for them to wait on the ground for 20 minutes? You can see the airline schedule going on over here. And this is actually right here on the, on the far right side. This is their like touch screen so they can contact all their people. So these are actually all buttons for them to phone um, a friend in a sense. So they can push the button and then they have that phone number already going. And um, we have maintenance and we have a few other items here in front of us, but really cool to see how many pieces of the puzzle dispatchers are putting together. And uh, you really have to like puzzles in a sense to like this job or to be interested in wanting to pursue something like this job. Okay, let's see. Dispatch certificate opportunities. I did want to touch on this. I wanted to mention this um, because I'm talking about airline dispatchers. That's my primary, uh, that's what I focus on in my dispatch program because that's what you get the certificate for. You focus on an airline dispatch position. Now, there are more positions out there than just airlines, but that's what you get the certificate for, and then it's highly accepted in other areas. So first, we'll start here, the dispatcher positions, scheduled airliners, okay, so that's anyone that's departing at 8.05, 8.30, 9.05, 9.15, whatever the schedule is already created, that's all the airlines, that's a major cargo like FedEx and UPS and DHL and um, other airlines that they have a schedule to keep and Things are on it or off it, and that's scheduled carriers. And so dispatch positions are required by the FA. So your job is secure. It is an FA mandated position um, for these airlines here, these operations. And then we have business aviation, and some people might not think about this right away, but think about Home Depot. They have a corporate flight department. What about Costco? They have a flight corporate flight department. Pepsi, Coca-Cola, SoCal Edison. Whatever the company is, uh, Charter Spectrum, um, the news channels, whatever it is, they have whatever you know you like, um, mobile gas station. They have their own airplanes because it's more efficient and more cost effective to run your own operation than renting aircraft and taking flights that aren't the right time and everything else. So you have corporate flight departments and they also want dispatchers. And even though an FA certificate is not required, they really like people with FA certificates because you just have so much knowledge in your head and you understand the aviation lingo. Charter operations, let's say you wanted to rent a plane and go to Hawaii for your anniversary or something, you can do that. And they most likely have a dispatcher. They have a dispatcher, but if they're lucky, they have an FA certificate dispatcher. They always choose them first. There's just not that many out there. Fractional ownership, that's a whole nother thing that we probably don't need to get into. 
but they also have dispatchers and schedulers that they're working with. There's a whole organization that it focuses on uh, like aircraft scheduling. Um, and so uh, they also are gonna be hiring aircraft dispatchers. And it goes on and on in the business aviation sector that they want aircraft dispatchers. They would love people with an FA certificate even though it's focused on airlines because the knowledge level that it brings their applicants in with. And then I wanted to put management positions and I mentioned how Brent did a great job or um, talking about uh, career opportunities. And I think that's really important for you to understand. So some career opportunities go beyond the dispatch um, center. So if you think, okay, well, let's say I got my dispatch certificate. What if I don't wanna be a dispatcher anymore? What, after, what if after five, 10 years, I wanna do something different? Maybe I don't like that job anymore. I wanna change. Well, the great news is there are so many things you can do with your dispatch certificate that aren't technically dispatch. And a lot of it is like a stepping stone, if you think. So you can move up in the company, you can move to the meteorology department, so you can spread your wings in that area. You can look at into um, becoming an ATC coordinator, so you can be the liaison between the airline and air traffic controllers and kind of make the routing work for everybody. You can work as fleet coordinators where you're planning, okay, this aircraft has to go on maintenance in Dallas, but it needs to fly to Atlanta first. How do I schedule all my 1500 airplanes around to get them in the right place at the right time? I'm definitely in our puzzle job. Um, training departments, there's someone that's gonna constantly be needing to organize dispatch training. So if you like being a teacher, you can kind of think about that route after a couple of years of being a dispatcher. And then there's SMS, which is a safety management system departments. So all of these different departments and really anything in flight operations, they're gonna to wanna to pull people with dispatch certificates. Now I have about the job and I wanted to mention this to you because I do think it's really important um, that you understand a few things about the job. One is every day is a new day and you either want a job where you show up and you know you're, you're doing this every single day and it's the exact same thing and if that's you, dispatch is not for you. But if you wanna say, hey, you know what? I don't wanna do what I did yesterday. Today I want a whole new set of challenges. I want a whole new set of paperwork on my desk. I wanna to talk to different people than I talked to yesterday. I want to solve different problems. This is the job for you. Every day is a new day. Every day has different weather. Every day you're working on different routes, most likely. Every day you're working with different pilots on different aircraft. So same system you're working within, different circumstances. Maybe yesterday you didn't have a thunderstorm. Today you have a thunderstorm. You have to figure out how to get everybody around it. And what is it going to do to crew scheduling and delays and everything else? So every day is a new day, and that's a pretty exciting thing for me. I really like that aspect of the job. Um, another great thing is you get to leave your job at work. Um, if some of you are in high school, you don't maybe understand that concept yet, but as you get older, you think, oh, you know, I know for me as a college professor, once I go home, I'm thinking, okay, did I create the next quiz for this week? Did I prepare my next lecture? Oh, I need to read chapter four to review that again for the students. Oh, I have to prepare whatever homework assignment. Oh, I need to still grade. And I have my to-do list that goes on and on and on. A lot of jobs are like that uh, when you get into a professional industry. This job is not like that. Every day is a new day and you leave your job at work. You don't go home and you're not still working on that flight. You have left that flight, you've handed it off to somebody else and tomorrow you get a whole new flight, you don't work at home. That's at least in the airlines, corporate's a little bit different. Uh, you're home every day. So you have a 10 hour shift and then you're home, eight or 10 hour shift and then you're home every day, maybe different hours but you're home every day. So that's a big advantage as well for those of you who might think you want a family one day. Many opportunities for advancement within industry, all kinds of advancement. There are so many job opportunities that you might not be familiar with in the airlines and the flight department specifically, but there are countless jobs um, that, that it would be hard to even imagine all the different opportunity advancements, but definitely um, dispatch will get your foot in the door and really help you get up there. Uh, flight benefits, you still get flight benefits. So if you think, well, airline pets get to jump seat and they get to get a free flight. Well, you could do that too because dispatchers are required to do flights. Um, so that's a really nice thing as well. So you still get all the benefits of being in the airline, even if you're not flying the airplane, you still get the family flight benefits. Recurring trainings every six months, you're back in there and that's great because you always wanna stay current in your field, especially when you have people's lives in your hands. So you're gonna to continue to get that recurrent training. New problems to solve every day. I mentioned that one already. And it is an essential job. It is a required job by the FA for the airline to hire you. So your job is has job security. It's not going away and 
You're not getting laid off and no one's seeing you home. You are essential to operations. Competitive salary, you may start at the lower end um, of the scale, but I wanna encourage you because you will get up there if you stay in the industry. So if you think, well, airline pilots make more, that's true, but not at first. And they have to pay a lot more for flight training to get into the industry. And then they have to take a couple of years to get the experience they need to enter. So they're potentially entering with $100,000 in debt because of flight training. And maybe they're only making 40,000 to start with 100,000 in debt and everything else. The nice thing about dispatch is you don't have that huge investment to go into college. You go into a program, we'll talk about those in a second, you get your certificate and then you start working right away. And it doesn't take long for you to get to the majors to get to that higher salary. That could be like a six or seven year jump depending on where you go, or maybe 10 years. It really depends on the airline and how you kind of organize your career, but you definitely have good money making potential in this field without those huge loans required for flight training. So how do you get a dispatch certificate? So I wanted to mention a few things to you. You can search FA approved 14 CFR, type this whole thing in. If you would only remember 14 CFR part 65 schools, that's fine too. You can type in however you want and you'll get a whole list of approved uh, schools in the whole United States. As of uh, February 23rd of this year, there were only 50 schools on the list. And that means there are not as many opportunities as there used to be. They used to have, um, private areas, private organizations where you can, you know, go for eight weeks or go for six weeks and you don't even have to go to college. They really shifted away from that because the knowledge level is so heavy that in order to pass the exam, you have to know so much that typically those eight week programs just weren't cutting it with the pass rates they needed to, to stay in business. And so the FA has really pushed people towards the college mindset. Doesn't mean you have to have a four-year degree. There are two-year degree programs that will also get there. And there still are those shorter eight, six week programs that you might be looking in. Written knowledge exam, similar to uh, ATP exam, airline transport pilot, which means it's a lot of knowledge. If you can imagine walking in from where you are, maybe in high school and you're saying, oh, for this job, I only have to know as much as an airline pilot. That, that's a lot of information. So definitely a, a good mental challenge for you. Regulated training hours, they say you have to have a minimum of this many hours. And then after you do the written test, your required hours, then you do an oral exam with a FA representative or um, designated examiner. So a little bit about California Baptist University. We are approved 1465 program since 2015. I think that's when the paperwork finally went in. We started in 2014 and then the paperwork finally went through in 2015. We have three dispatch specific courses. So what you would do if you're pursuing a dispatch certificate at California Baptist, you do have to go for the full four years. We are not a two year program you would go for even either aviation management and say, hey, you know what, I like management. I think I wanna go that way. And then you could add on those courses you need to get the dispatch as well. And so you graduate with a career route to aviation management and a dispatch certificate able to go that route. Or if you start as a flight student, you can say, hey, I wanna add those three dispatch courses on. It's very similar knowledge. I'm gonna get that extra knowledge. And now I'm leaving school with pilot certificates and my dispatch certificate. So it's an aviation flight concentration or aviation management minor. You have to pick one of those if you wanna be in the program. And we've had a 100% pass rate. Um, it, we're a small program, so we don't put out a lot of students every year. We put about six to eight students out a year. And then lastly, I know you guys are asking when are you gonna finish, but I talk for a living. So that's my contact information. You can write down my email if you have any more questions about dispatch. That's my office phone number. It'll go straight to voicemail. You leave a message there and general program questions at CBU and Laura. I'm finally done, Laura, it's all yours. Hey, that was great, Elizabeth. We do have a question for you that I hope you can answer. And this comes from our high school. As a high school student that is interested in aircraft dispatch, what can I do slash learn now to help me get my foot in the door? That's a great question. What I would recommend for you is to start learning private pilot ground knowledge. Now, there may be a technical program near you that helps um, high schoolers to get a private pilot certificate. If you want to also fly, that's a great option. But if you're like me, well, I did go the flying route, but if you're in the mentality that, you know what, I like dispatch, I don't have an extra 10 or 12,000 sitting around to get a private pilot certificate, that's okay. All you have to do is buy, you can email me for a couple book recommendations. 
you can buy some aviation books and start reading. And then you can look into where can I go to school. And so if you start with a good knowledge base and you can read for fun, there are some great textbooks. Some of them are written with humor. Some of them are cut and dry, but they're FA, everything you need to know. Start learning about aviation. Look at, learn about private pilot knowledge and instrument pilot knowledge. And that'd be a great start for you to say like, okay, I think I like this stuff. I can move forward. Okay, we do have another question. They said that you, um, you showed the picture of the dispatch area. Are all of this, there you go, that's it right there. Are they all set up like that? Or is there that many screens in front of you each time? <laughs> so it depends. This is one station. So I know that that sounds crazy because you're like, oh my goodness. These four screens that are up here are actually really, really big and they're towards the middle of the room. So that's not only at your desk. These four that are connected over here are, they look like what they're right by the desk, but they're actually up higher. Like if you have a big screen, um, so there's multiple dispatchers that are looking at this setup right here. These computers at Southwest Airline, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, are all one person's job station. So that's out Southwest. They have great technology. That's exactly where you want to be if you are a dispatcher. They have some of the greatest pay and benefits. Um, I, I know I'm sounding like I'm pitching them, but that's where you want to go if you want the greatest pay, I think, currently for dispatchers. Seven computer monitors just for that one person to do their job. Um, if you go to a smaller regional airline, you might only have four monitors or five monitors. And then some of these bigger airlines, you might start getting a little bit more um, kind of handed to you. But yeah, that is one job station. These four monitors are, there's probably about four of them on like a, a big um, cube in a sense. So people are seeing those. FedEx has a giant wall monitor with similar information. So yeah, everybody has like at least four or five or seven monitors each station. It's a lot. Okay, we just had a question pop up. As a current college student in aviation management, how would you recommend I get a certificate? Well, first check if your program of where you are has a dispatch certificate um, option because some programs do have it. You can always look on that. You can type in part 65 uh, FA schools, that's kind of the shorter way to do that and see if your school's on it. That would tell you right away if your school has a program. If your school doesn't have a program, look on that list and see if something close by. If you're currently in management, this is an amazing option for you because just having the dispatch certificate will get you job opportunities, even if you don't want to go dispatch and you want to stay in management. If you have that flight knowledge um, certificate, you're gonna be so much more successful when dealing with aviation because you're gonna understand the technical side of management. So I highly recommend it, even if you're like, I don't wanna be a dispatcher. I only wanna have one screen in front of me, that's fine. I still highly recommend you get the dispatch cert, look to see if there's schools where you are at, or you are at. look to see if there's programs near you. If not there, you can contact me or contact UAA. There are scholarship opportunities for you to apply to get a scholarship to maybe complete something over the summer or maybe um, you can take a private pilot or instrument ground knowledge test as an elective or instrument class as an elective to help again, prepare you for that mindset when you do get that dispatch opportunity for those courses. But you can definitely reach out if you have um, specific questions about that. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. I do not think there are any other questions and we're right at 11 o'clock. So we did this good. I'm looking to make sure that there aren't any more. But I really appreciate you coming on and sharing with us today. It was very informative.